Hope everybody's having a great day. Granted, it is a very, very, very rainy day here in Eminence. Very rainy. Um, we're just going to kind of hang out here for a minute and give everybody a little bit of time to jump on. Um, just so you know, we're looking at Galatians this morning. Uh, it's Galatians chapter 5, verses 15, 13 through 15, and then Galatians 6, and it's going to be... Uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 10. Morning, Doug. Hope you're having a great day today. Um, I hope everybody's just having a great day. I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, Mr. Jacob hasn't called in yet this morning, so if you hear a phone ring, don't worry about it. It's just going to hopefully be Jacob anyway. Um, so, you know, the world's opening back up. Good morning, Pastor Paul. We're getting a little, maybe a little more closer to normal. Hopefully, I don't have my music playing too loud. Hopefully, you can hear me. But I like having the music. Good morning, Miss J.C. Lynn. Hope you and your family are having a great day. Good morning, Miss Carolyn. So, um, we're just giving everybody just a few minutes to jump on and kind of get everything started before we just dive right in this morning. But we do have a really good lesson. I know I say that every week, but it really is a good lesson. Um, this week we are looking at serve. Uh, if you've been here with us the last few weeks, this whole unit we've looked at love, we've looked at encourage, uh, last week was forgive, good morning Corey, good morning Bethany, hi McKenna, hi me, um, Kylie, um, anyway last week was forgive and this week is serve. We're looking at what it means to serve. So it should be really good I think anyway. Um, we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer, so if you guys are ready, we're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to come over this lesson. So here we go. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning, and we just lift up this lesson to you, Lord. We give it all to you. We give everything we have to you. And we just ask you to move in and through and with us in this lesson, Lord. Just move in our hearts and open them up. Move in our minds and move in our just our whole selves, Lord. Just move in us and awaken us to a way that we can serve. Awaken us to a way that we can look outside of ourselves and see the needs that are right in front of us and serve others. And we just ask all of these things in your name, Lord. Amen. Okay. Good morning, little Miss Linda Mayhan. Good morning, Eula. Well, hey, Chad. Good to see all you guys. Um, we are getting started in our lesson this morning, and we are in Galatians. I'm going to go ahead and stop on music really quick. We are in Galatians, and uh, we're looking at chapter 5, verse 13 through 15, and then we're looking at chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 10. Good morning, Miss Mindy. And... Uh, this is, it's um, like the whole point of our lesson, really. It says, seize the opportunity to serve. And so if you're going to seize something, you're literally going to grab hold of it. And you're going to just cling to it. So that's what they're telling us here in this lesson, is that we need to seize that opportunity. We need to hunt it down and we need to grab a hold of it when we find it. Um, good morning, Miss Patty. Um, again, for those just joining us, we're in Galatians, and we're in chapter 5, verses 13 through 15, and then chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and then verse 10. And so we're going to go ahead and start and get this going. Um, I want to kind of back up a little bit because it starts in chapter, or in chapter 5, verse 13, but the first verse of that lesson, good morning, Ed Wood, he's sitting right across the room from us, by the way. <laughs> Um, the first verse in that chapter is a beautiful verse. And it says, Christ has liberated us to be free. Stand firm then and don't submit against a yoke of slavery. So before we found Christ, we were slaves to sin. And then we invited Christ to live in our hearts. And he died on the cross. And when he died on the cross... That set us free. That literally set you free. You are free. Free indeed. I mean, it is, a, it is a huge, huge thing to be free. 
Um, I looked up the definition of the word free, and just so you know, the definition of the word free is not restricted, controlled, or limited, for example, by rules, customs, or other people. Hmm. So, free, Christ set you free when he died on the cross, and you are no longer con restricted or controlled or limited. Good morning, Miss Christina. Good morning, Miss Amy. Uh, we are in Galatians uh, chapter 5, and we're at verse 13, which I've actually backed up to verse 1. But, um, so, and when it says that you are not limited by rules or customs of other people, when, because Paul wrote this letter, this Galatians is actually a letter to the church of Galatia. And Paul, if we remember, used to be Saul and used to be a persecutor of the church. And then he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and had a huge change. And Saul became Paul, a follower of Christ and a builder of churches and a huge servant for the church. So he's writing this letter back to Galatia because when he left them, they were doing great. And then it seems like every time their role model goes away, other things come in. Good morning, Miss Vanita. And so if, you know, if you are at that point where you became a Christian and you were just, woo, you were woohoo, on fire for the Lord, hands in the air, you are free, free indeed. And then over time, life got in the way and you kind of pulled back a little bit. The other thing, this is, this is what Paul's explaining here, is how to bring yourself back. How to get back to the church. So he goes on in his letter and he says, For you were called to be free, brothers and sisters. Only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out. Or you will be consumed by one another. And so, when Paul is telling you that, he's telling you that when Christ died, he died so that you could be free. So that we could be free. And that freedom is, the, is freedom from sin. And so, we need to be sure that we, we use that freedom. And not in a way that says that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to do this for a little while. I'm just, I'm just going to hang out with this group for a little while because I'm a Christian. I'm good now. I don't have to worry about anything. Christ is living in me. Christ is living in you. And hopefully you're feeding him as he's living in you. Hopefully you're studying things and you're getting your Bible out and you're reading it and you're learning from it and you're making highlights and sticky notes and and pulling on those scriptures and planting them in your hearts. And when you're listening to music or YouTube videos or whatever, that you're listening to something that's feeding your heart, that's feeding the Holy Spirit that's living inside you. If you want to have a relationship with someone, as we've said in this whole entire unit, you have to have a commitment to each other. You have to learn each other. And that's what God is telling us here, you know, you can't use that freedom that Christ gave you to do fleshly things. You have to use that freedom that Christ gave you to change your mindset. You know, I've really been listening. Uh, my YouTube or you version uh, Bible app, I, I told you this before, but it has a great section in the audio section. And there is an actual um, section on Galatians. And it will like tell you what Galatians means and then it reads you that chapter in the Bible. And it is just so good. I highly recommend it to anybody who's trying to learn more about their Bible because it really breaks it down in modern, understandable language that you can get and explains what it means when they're saying these things. Um, I did highlight this in our book and it says freedom is something all people crave. And right now in the middle of all of this, we're probably craving freedom a little more than we even were before because we've lost so many freedoms, in all honesty. Not that I'm 
condoning social dis, uh, disobedience. I'm not. I mean, you know, we still need to respect all the rules that are set in place, and we need to do the things that that we're being told to do. But I'm just saying, in a month and a half, we lost a lot of freedoms. And it says we all want to be free, but sin so easily entangles us and keeps us from experience the freedom available in Jesus. Paul reminds us that a revolution has come through Christ. Because of Jesus' perfect sacrifice, the power that sin once enslaved us to has been broken. And we can be free from the control of sin in our lives. Now I want you to remember, in my world, the way I look at sin is anything that has more control over you than you have over it is a sin. Good morning, Miss Kira. And so, it, I mean, sin could be anything. And I believe that you're either born with an addiction gene or you're not born with an addiction gene. I have a huge fear that I probably have an addiction gene because my family has an addiction history. And so, but that doesn't necessarily mean that maybe I'm addicted to drugs or would be addicted to drugs. Or maybe that I would be addicted to alcohol. But maybe I would be addicted to shopping. Or maybe I would be addicted to gambling. Or maybe I would be addicted to, I mean, sex or anything. I mean... Anything that has more control over you than you do over it is a sin. Because it doesn't have a proper place. It's running you. You're not running it. So when Jesus tells us, or when Paul tells us here that we need to put Jesus first, and he's the one who set us free. He set you free from that addiction to sin. From that want to, to want sin. Because hopefully... Hopefully, if we're true Christians, then we have Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit in the forefront of our mind, and they're what's leading us. Not that sin that we used to be addicted to, that we turned away from when we turned to Christ. So we have to be really careful when we see that word freedom and think that we as Christians have the freedom to do whatever we want. I mean, you do. In a way. But you also have to realize that you as a Christian have to have Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit first. Then yourself. So keep that in mind. Okay. So it goes on here and it says, oh, this is it. If we focus on ourselves, our relationships will never be as healthy as God intends. When we focus inwardly on ourselves, sin likes to create selfishness, greed, uncaring attitudes, and they quickly will sour a relationship. How many people are going to want to be friends with you if you're selfish? How many people are going to want to be friends with you if you're greedy? How many people are going to be friends with you if you're uncaring? Or even want to love you or be in your life or, be, or build life with you? We have to turn away from those things and turn to God. And when we turn to God... He's leading us, and he's leading us to put others first. He tells us, it tells us, for the whole law, the whole law, the whole law is fulfilled in one statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. So if we follow that, if, if we follow that, then we've got this. But it's a lot harder than it sounds sometimes. Because we're human. And we don't necessarily like putting somebody else's ideas first. We don't necessarily like putting somebody else's feelings first. We want to have the new pickup. We want to have the fancy house. We want to have the pool. We want to have the really super cool camper. We don't want to settle for what God has given us. And we aren't grateful sometimes for what God has given us. We are really working on that in our lives right now, realizing all of the things that we are blessed with. Not all of the things that we want to have, but all of the things we already have that we're so, so thankful for. Um, even just, just your health. I mean, especially right now. You know, we can be so thankful that in Shannon County, we still do not have any known cases of the coronavirus. We're, I think, probably the last county, I think, in Missouri. That I know of, anyway. Um, so, you know, that is huge. But even outside of that, um, 
you know, my brother, who is younger than I am, good morning, Senior Pastor Paul, good morning, Madison Keeley, um, my brother, who's younger than I am, was actually diagnosed with MS, you know, probably maybe two years ago now, year and a half ago, something like that, and it's progressed really quickly. My sister um, just had this freak thing where she, her back hurt and she went to the doctor and come to find out her back was broken. And now she's had to have multiple surgeries and she's very limited on what she can do because there's so much pain. So, and I'm the oldest, I'm actually four years older than she is. So in my family, my immediate, just me and my siblings, I literally have the best health of anybody. And I am so thankful for that. But it reminds you, you know, Give thanks for that. Thank God for all the blessings that you have. Not just the big ones, not just the huge ones, but every blessing. Just thank him so much because he is working in your world. Good morning, Miss Angie. Okay, so we're going to move on now. And we are still in Galatians. And we are in uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Okay, and so Galatians is going to be in your new testament youth group and so it's galatians chapter 6 verses 1 through 5 and so paul is writing the letter and he's going on and he's saying brothers and sisters if someone is overtaken by any wrongdoing you who are spiritual restore such person with a gentle spirit watching out for yourself so that you won't be tempted carry one another's burdens in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. For anyone who considers himself to be something when he is nothing deceives himself. Let each person examine his own work and then he can take pride in himself alone, not compare himself with someone else. For each person will have to carry his own load. Okay, so Paul is telling us as Christians now that if someone in our life, someone in our friend group is doing something wrong. They're doing something away from Christ. They're doing something that is away from loving your neighbor as yourself. Then we who are spiritual, we who are with Christ, we're supposed to restore that person with a gentle spirit. Now that's, that's huge right there because that doesn't mean calling them down in front of everybody. That doesn't mean slamming them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever. That doesn't mean any of that at all. That means one-on-one -on -one going to that person, not accusing them, not condemning them, not uh, slamming them, not throwing a bunch of stuff up in their face, but gently saying, you know, I'm praying for you because I feel like this, this part of your life is maybe taking you down a path that is not something God has intended for you. So that is a gentle spirit. You know, you, you would never want to do anything without praying about it first. You would never want to do anything just simply because you feel like they're doing something wrong because you need to examine it and you need to pray about it and you need to ask God to lead you and you need to ask the Holy Spirit to come into you and bless you and give you the words to say. You would never just willy-nilly run out and confront somebody and tell them that they're living life wrong because I can tell you anytime you point that finger there's like four more pointed right back at you. So be really careful about pointing fingers or assigning blame. Because we don't want to do that. We just want to be a gentle spirit that guides others towards Christ. That's what our job as Christians are. And it also says, in case you missed this part, carry one another's burdens. Carry one another's burdens. Carry means you're going to have to lift it up. Means you're going to have to take part of the weight. Means you're going to have to maybe sweat a little bit. I mean... I don't know about you, but when we carry stuff around this house, it usually is pretty tough work because just like, I don't know, two weeks ago or something like that, we had a box that was upstairs 
because we're you know constantly trying to remodel something and right now it's the upstairs bedrooms so this box upstairs was filled with tools like I, everything i mean everything you could possibly imagine was in this crazy box and so we're trying to bring it down the stairs and ed is behind the box and i'm in front of the box coming down the stairs and i almost missed a step i did not miss the step praise the lord because it was literally like the next week after i'd been on here with my black eye because i'd fell and i laughed and i told him i said just so you know they're never going to believe that i fell again and have another black eye i'm just letting you know you're going to be under investigation but luckily we made it down the stairs and it was fine but the burden was heavy he could have never brought it down the stairs by himself lord knows i would have never been able to get that thing down the stairs by myself but the two of us together carried the burden and that's the same thing with anyone morning stephen with anyone who is dealing with some kind of sin in their life they need you to help them carry the burden they need you to ease the load for them not add to the load not throw more things on top of the load to where they feel squished and abandoned we don't want to do that we want to ease and carry the load that's what we're called to do but you have to be careful because when you're close enough to somebody to carry the load you're really close in their life you're you're in the muck you're in the mire with them you are especially right now you are definitely in the muck in the mire if you're helping somebody carry something so you have to be careful because it goes on to tell you watching out you know it says uh, restore such a person with a gentle spirit watching out for yourself so that you won't be tempted because we have to be careful yes we're christians we're also human and we get tempted every single day jesus was tempted we learned about that you can be tempted and sometimes those temptations are really 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 hard to walk away from so be careful as you're out helping someone and you're you're ministering to them and you're helping carry that load you know be careful just watch yourself um it does also say for if anyone considers himself to be something when he is nothing he deceives himself so we we we're just humans we're really not all that in a bag of chips i just want to break it to you in case nobody's told you that i mean god loves you and he wants nothing but just uh, just the best life with you that he could possibly have but on our own we're really not that great i mean we sin and we're easily overtaken and we're easily persuaded and you know we're really just not that much so in our own selves we aren't much but when we have christ in us when we have truly committed our heart to him that's a whole nother ball game the, i mean we're like yeah that's that's everything but christ is the one that's living in you that's giving you all of those things where you go out and you bless other people it's not us doing the blessing heavens we can't bless anybody it's christ living in you that's giving the blessing to somebody else so don't take a lot of pride in yourself for doing that make sure that you give the thanks to god and to the holy spirit and to jesus for planning that inside you that will inside you that want inside you to go out and bless someone else because on our own we're not going to do it we're human and humans are really not that good they're really not the last part of our verse finishes up and we're in, still in Galatians and we're still in chapter 6 and we're going to verse 10. And so this is verse 10. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of faith. Okay, so now I took my verse, if you can see, and I substituted some words in there because that's what I like to do. And so if we take that verse and it says, therefore, as, it doesn't say if, it does not say if, it says as you have the opportunity. Because 
you're going to have the opportunity. There's not going to be a day when you may or may not have an opportunity to help somebody. There's not going to be a day when, oh, I may or may not have the opportunity to bless somebody. No. No. If your eyes are open and you are breathing and your feet are on the floor, you have an opportunity to do something for someone. Maybe it's only a quick hello. Maybe it's only a quick text message to say, hey, I am thinking about you and I am praying for you. Maybe it's only a virtual congratulations on a graduation that you didn't get to attend because of the virus. Maybe it's a drive-by baby shower. I saw one of those yesterday. You know, you have the opportunities. You just have to open your eyes and see them. That's what, that's what Paul's telling you. He doesn't say, if, if you get a chance to do this, if somebody asks you to help them, if, you know, it's convenient, mm -mm. no, no. Paul tells you as you have the opportunity. An opportunity can be the moment, the time, the shot. I mean, there's a great quote that I've always loved. It's not biblical, but it is, it's sports actually. But it's this basketball, and it's this old gym, kind of like our old gym, and it, the sun is shining through a window, and it's hitting right on a basketball on a gym floor, and the quote says, you will always miss 100% of the shots you never take. And it's true. If you don't ever get in the game, if you don't ever put forth the effort, you will always, always miss the opportunity. So Paul's calling on us, get in the game. The coach is calling for you. The whistle is blowing, get in the game. So he's telling you, you know, as you have the opportunity, let us work. Okay, so work can be labor, work can be exert, work can be produce. You can produce the good. You can make the good. You can exert the effort. You can do it. There's, there's literally nothing that could stop you from having an opportunity to be good or to work for the good of all. Nothing. I mean, I, don't, I can't think of anything that could stop you from working for the good. I mean, right now, we're in such a virtual world you can literally connect with anybody, anywhere, in a matter of seconds. Um, used to be, way back in the day, when Ed and I were first married and he was driving truck, you would have to be home at a certain time because he was going to have to stop someplace on the road at a truck stop that had phones, pay phones, and he was going to have to call me on the landline phone at our house. And so... I had to be home at a certain time to be able to talk to him because he couldn't just pick up a cell phone and call me anytime he wanted to. He couldn't just send me a Snapchat, you know, whenever he stopped for his break. You know, the only time I could talk to him was at a designated time. Usually it was around supper time because that's when we were going to be home. So every day, the boys and I would have to be at the house at XYZ time so that I could talk to him because that was the only time. So... That was an opportunity. That was, you know, you had to put effort into it. You had to think about it. You had to plan for it. You had to make sure that it was all going to work out. And if it didn't work with him to be able to stop at that particular time, then I just didn't get to talk to him that night. Or maybe he stopped later and he would call before the boys went to bed. Hi, Miss Linda. Good to see you this morning. So our verse goes on. And it said, uh, start back. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, the moment, the time, the shot, let us work, let us labor, let us exert, let us produce for the good of all. All is complete, entire, total. It's not just picking out, okay, we're going to work for the good of the people in our church and the rest of y'all are on your own. Good luck, by the way. It's not, we're going to work for the good of the people in our family. Just our family here. The rest of you people, you keep your distance. We're not working for you. It's not what he tells us. You know, keep in mind, Jesus did not just hang out with Mary and Joseph. Mm -mm. Jesus did not just hang out with the disciples. Nope. 
Jesus was hanging out with the tax collectors. He was hanging out with the prostitutes. He was hanging out with the women who had had more than five husbands or whatever. You know, he was hanging out with the guards. He was, you know, even his disciples. I thought about this this week as I was studying for this. Even his disciples, you know, most of them were fishermen. Which, I mean, you think of a fisherman as somebody who's standing on a lake, casting out, and pulling it in. No. No, 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 no. These fishermen had huge nets and great big boats. And they were going out into huge bodies of water and casting the nets over the side and bringing in huge hauls of fish. These were strong, manly, blue-collar, hard-working, everyday guys. And it made me think, these disciples, they were my husband. He's a truck driver. He works around men all day long. I mean, there's some women truck drivers, but generally, for the most part, it is a man's profession. Chris and Nick, our boys, they work on the riverboats. Definitely a man position. I mean, maybe the cooks are women, but generally, for the most part, all the people working on the riverboats are men. Um, our son-in-law, Jake, he works for a construction company. Definitely a man profession for the most part. I mean, there probably is some women, but not on Jake's crew. It's all men. And any time, and I'm not slamming men here, and I'm not meaning this the way it actually sounds, but generally, if it's men working with men, good morning, Miss Gidget, if it's men wor working with men, usually it's a fairly rough crowd. You know, they're not walking around drinking the coffee with their little pinky pointed out, being all genteel and all that. No. They're men. They're hardworking, dedicated men. So, even when Jesus was forming his posse, his crew, his go-to guys, he was just forming normal, everyday people. So, he's not expecting us to be some kind of miracle worker. He's the miracle worker. He's not expecting us to be some kind of savior that's going to save the planet. He's the savior. He already saved the planet. He already took care of all that. He's just expecting us to work for the good of all. So to finish up our verse, therefore, and we're in Galatians chapter 6. We're finishing up with verse 10 in case anybody wants to jump in there because it really is a really, really good, good chapter in the Bible. Therefore, as, not if, as we have the opportunity, the moment, the time, the shot. Let us work. Let us labor. Let us exert. Let us produce for the good of all. For the complete community. For the entire community. For the total group. Especially for those who belong to the household. To the family. To the blood. To the kin of faith. So, it's not limiting you to only work for the people who have the same beliefs as you. But it's telling you to especially work for them. To exert maybe a little bit more effort to those other Christians. Good morning, Miss Delia. It's telling you to... It's just like I told you about love. Love is a verb. Serve is a verb. You've got to put some sweat in the game. You have to exert yourself. You have got to work at it to produce anything. We're in Galatians and we're finishing up on chapter 6 and we're finishing up with verse 10. And it, you know, even when it says though, especially those who are in the household of faith, it doesn't mean that we ignore those who are outside the church. Sowing good seeds in lost people is incredibly important. It's huge. How are you ever going to bring anybody to Christ if you don't go out and sow seeds to people who are not already in your church? I mean, that would be ridiculous. That would be like, you know, planting corn and expecting tomatoes to come up. You know, it's not going to happen. You have to get outside your comfort area. Good morning, Miss Summer. You have to get outside, and good morning, April. You have to get outside your comfort area if you're going, ever going to see any kind of results. Otherwise, you're going to get the same tomatoes that you've been growing. You're going to get the same lettuce that you've been growing. 
You need to plant the seeds so that you can have new crops. You can have new things come up in your world. The other day, I picked some of my herbs. I picked some mint. And I, by the way, mint and lemonade, oh, bomb diggity. Just giving you that little life hack there. It is amazing. But I put it in this bowl so that it wouldn't wilt. But I want you to look here. This has grown roots, I mean big roots, in a week. So if anybody would like a started mint, I have that by the way. But I exerted an effort. I picked it. I brought it in the house. I put it in water. I've watched the water all week long. I've made sure that it had enough water. I've added to it if it needed to. It's the same thing with planting seeds with people who are not Christians. You're going to have to work at it. You can't just cast it broadly on the ground and expect it to come up. Good morning, Miss Linda. You have to nurture it. You have to support it. You have to lift it up to the sun. To the sun. Get it? To the sun. It does ask us a question here. It says, how can we structure our lives to be ready to serve others? Hmm. Because we already talked about, it's not a matter of if you can serve others. It's a matter of you can serve others if you have your eyes open and if you're doing it. Good morning, Miss Mariah. We're finishing up in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. So it asks us, how can we structure our lives to be ready to serve others? How can you structure your life to be ready to serve others? I mean, you're busy people. You have jobs. You have families. You have, you know, youth group. You have boyfriends. You have girlfriends. You have things that you're doing. You have life that's going on. Right now we have a quarantine. Still yet somewhat kind of. I don't know exactly how that whole thing's going to end up. So what, are we, what can we do to structure our life to serve others? Well, these are some things that I thought of. And if you think of anything, you can put it in the chat. And that way, everybody can draw from everybody else. And literally, honestly, anything that you want to comment on on the lesson or pull from it or suggest something else, please feel free to comment in the, in the chat. Um, I would really appreciate if you're going to reprimand me to message me personally. I don't really like hate. So, you know, I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, but if we're going to serve others... The main thing I would think is try not to be so self-involved. It's huge on humans. I mean, it really is. I have told this story tons of times in our Sunday school class, but my kids would come home from church or from school and they would be like, the lunch lady hates me. I'm like, really? Why does the lunch lady hate you? Well, she was not nice to me today and she just threw my food on my plate and she hurt my feelings. I'm like, well, number one, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you're probably not a blimp on the lunch lady, lady's radar. I'm just going to let you know. Maybe her husband yelled at her before she left the house this morning. Maybe she ran over the dog on her way out of the driveway. Maybe she just got noticed that, you know, she has to do some other kind of hard job at work. You know, maybe she has a loved one who's sick. You don't know. You just want to assume that since she wasn't Miss Bubbly Sunshine, that she hates you. Well, she doesn't hate you. So... We need to not be so self-absorbed. And we, I mean, we as adults have a huge problem with this. I mean, walk into work. If somebody doesn't immediately say good morning to you, or maybe they say morning as they're busy at their desk, or maybe they just don't say anything at all. Instantly your feelings hurt. Instantly you're like, what did I do to make them mad? What did I do to just start their day off with a bad thing? Well, I'm not going to speak to them. If they're not going to speak to me, I'm not talking to them. So, you know, youth, you don't have a handle on this. Just let you know. You, evidently, you don't ever outgrow it. I'm still working on it. But that's my thing. We need to not be so self-involved. Um, we need to take time. We need to take time out of our schedule to actually interact with others, to see what their needs are. It's hard to serve somebody if you don't even know what they need. Find out. Get involved. And my last one was... Slow down. Slow down. It's hard to see a need if you never take the time to look. If we are constantly in a blur, going somewhere, doing something, we're probably going to miss a ton of opportunities that God has right in front of us to serve 
because we are literally too busy. So that's my thing. Slow down. So that's kind of been our lesson today. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope it is giving you kind of an insight as to um, how to serve others. Oh, I did have this one thing. I know I've over my time limit already. Um, it's from my, one of my favorite pastors on YouTube, and it's Jimmy Evans. And it's his idea of what heaven and hell are going to look like. So, I need you to picture this in your mind. You're in heaven. You are at a huge banquet table. It has all of your favorite foods. I mean, like, people in our family, granny fries, chocolate pie, prepared perfectly. is right there. And, by the way, there are no carbs, no sugar, no calories in heaven, just so you know. You can have anything you want. Everything is prepared perfectly. You're all seated at the table. All of your family, all of your friends, everyone is there. But instead of having spoons, forks, and knives on the table, you have spoons and forks attached to the end of your hands. And they're huge. They're big. You can't reach your mouth with your own fork. So you can't eat. But you can put your fork in and you can feed that person across from you. Or you can feed that other person across from you. Or you can even feed that person beside you. You just can't feed yourself. But the people across from you, they're feeding you. The people beside you, they're feeding you. Because that's what it means to serve others. You're not so concerned with what you're going to get because you know that they're going to supply what you need. You're trying to supply what they need. Now, same scenario. Good morning, Miss Amy. Same scenario. This is hell. Same banquet table. Same perfectly prepared food. Same people all the way around you. Same utensils attached to your arms. You still can't feed yourself. The problem is, in hell, we are so self-centered and so self-absorbed and only worried about ourselves that we will literally starve to death before we feed somebody else, before we worry about their needs, before we worry about their wants, before we worry about what they would like to have. We are only concerned with ourself and we'll just starve to death before we feed somebody else. That's a pretty rough image of heaven and hell. But I think it's pretty accurate. And we want to make sure that this life that we have on this planet, that we're not so self-absorbed, so self-centered, that we will starve to death before we serve someone else. So we're going to end it on that note. And we are going to close in prayer. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. And I hope that it's maybe brought Galatians to life for you. Um, again, I definitely recommend uh, Uversion Bible app. And if you have the time, go in there and on the um, audio versions, it will literally read it to you. It is so good. Okay, and in this verse, it talks, or in this song, it talks about, um, my, this is, by the way, my new favorite jam, Holy Water. Oh, my goodness. If you see me driving through town with my hands in the air, I do try to only have one hand in the air and one hand on the steering wheel. Windows blaring, Holy Water's playing on the radio. Oh, oh, but it talks about it and it says, I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change your forgiveness. And so that's literally the gist of Paul's letter to the Galatian church. It's God's grace. That's what we want. Okay, so we're closing up in prayer. Heavenly Father, just thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for this unit that you've given us to study about how to love and how to forgive and how to serve and how to find joy, Lord. Thank you so much for just awakening our hearts to the things that you're calling on us to do. And we thank you so much for your grace, Lord. And we don't want to abuse it. We don't want to just hide and listen to rules and listen to things that we shouldn't do. We want to live for you and live for the things that we need to do, the things that we're called to do, the things that you're asking us to do, Lord. That's what we want. That's where we find our true life with you. That's where we find our joy with you, Lord, is hunting you out and seeking you and then seeking the people that you're laying in front of us to serve, Lord. If we just out open our eyes, the opportunities are right there. The, the, 
the jobs are right there that you're giving us to do if we just open our eyes and look for it, Lord. And we thank you so much for those opportunities. We thank you for the willingness to serve and the jobs that you give us to do. And we just call out to you, Lord. We call out to you to move in our hearts and move in our minds and open our eyes, Lord. Give us the clarity to see what you're calling on us to do. And give us the willing feet to walk out and do it, Lord. And I just give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Group, I hope you have had a wonderful morning. And I hope you continue to have a great day. Be sure to pack your rain boots and your raincoat if you're going out to church. I'm telling you, it's still raining out there. But anyway, it's going to be a great day. Um, oh, we're already in May. I was going to say April showers bring May flowers, but we're already in May. So I don't know. Maybe May showers bring something in June. I don't know. Have a great day. Love you guys. Bye.